Hello everybody. Today I want to talk a bit about Rack and about Chain AI because I, I looked at something and uh, I couldn't get it out of my head and I just want to show you and I was thinking about making this a course or something. All right, let's 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 talk about it. What's the idea behind this? I'm bringing this up because I was looking and I can show this to you here. I was looking at this video a few weeks ago. I did a react video on the innovative, uh, like a solution redefining Gen AI with AWS Sam and Bedrock and like where they did this whole rag thing, retrieval augmented generation. And so I thought, let's look into this. I, I couldn't get this out of my head and I, I want to show, share this with you, what I was thinking and um, talk about this. So let me quickly show you the, the process, right? How I, my process usually works is I write stuff down. Right? I'm, I'm thinking about this and, and I'm sketching stuff. So I made a sketch and this sketch I, I uh, made a bit better. It's still on my LinkedIn available. I have a better version here for you um, that I'm going to show in a second. Now, how I basically got into this, I was looking at it. Okay, what are the individual steps that this processing has to take? And where are potential problems or where, where are the difficult things? And from there, I was like looking at this. Right. So where I'm coming from, I'm coming from this video where they basically made the same thing that I had just on AWS. Because I was thinking like, could I do this without AWS? Could I do this on a local machine, for instance, for my students on their laptop? Uh, like, how could I do this? And basically, here's a cleaned up version of what I've just shown you. And we, let's let's quickly talk about this. The idea with this is, and I was thinking about this, like you could, let's say we have a UI here on the bottom left, right? We have a UI and this UI, this is uh, an app where we want to ask questions to the, um, to the platform and then we get results, right? And not just like ChatGPT where the results are in the internet. This is where we want to get information based on our own data. And in our own data means we have something like Elasticsearch and I choose Elasticsearch here as a, as a vector database or index platform because I already have courses around this in my academies. Because I, as I said, I, I was thinking already about courses. So the idea is you have some kind of file storage. That file storage is, or the file is taken with the Python script and then uh, indexed. That is indexing the context of that file and writing this into Elasticsearch. Right? So that when you come here on your UI, you ask a question, the UI calls an API, and the processing of that API then gets the context out of Elasticsearch and then sends that content and the question to the Gen AI algorithm that then basically cleans up the result and, and creates you a nice result that you can send back to the UI. That's the main functionality here, right? Now, what I identified here as being a problem, I think the difficult part is this here, getting the context and indexing the data. I think these are the difficult parts here because the rest of it seems pretty obvious, pretty simple, to be honest, like building a UI, not easy, building an API easy, like calling an algorithm, that should also be quite simple. So where I was coming from was here from this, they had open search and open search is basically in the background, Elasticsearch. So that's why I put in Elasticsearch and because I have an Elasticsearch. Um, Elasticsearch was my first thought. There are other specialized databases. I think Stone Branch, for instance, they also have a good database. Um, but I don't know yet any, uh, like, is this one better? Or is this one better? This is just, like, I'm also getting into this. I'm only getting into this whole topic of uh, Gen AI, and especially retrieval augmented generation. And so that's why I'm like, I'm also starting with this. So that's the idea. And this is also something that I had to understand that actually this part here, let's make these green here, these green arrows that these actually, how this works, right? 
I was always under the impression that the algorithm here actually somehow that this actually queries the data from Elasticsearch and then analyze it. But that's absolutely not how this happens, right? For me, the, the interesting part was seeing that actually the, the processing is what manages this all, the processing here. This is what gets the right information from Elasticsearch, sends it over with the question to the actual Gen AI algorithm, and that then builds the result that you then send back uh, over the API to the UI. Right? So that is something I found very, very interesting because I never really thought about it this way. I was always under the impression that this works better or it works different. But uh, I think this way it's quite obvious, right? And this is why people use, for instance, a serverless function here. In this example here, they used Lambda for the processing of indexing the data putting data into the, the knowledge base and querying the data uh, because this needs to run very fast, very often, and serverless is quite nice for this. And also uh, Postgres and Cassandra here because you need to somehow store the chat history, right? When you open up the UI, usually you want to get the chat history. Like let, Let's put another one in here. Get chat history. Store and get chat history. That is something you usually you want to do here in this phase. And for that, I think either Postgres, like a document store, or a white column store is really nice for this because you very easily can then store data for the user. And I think for deploying this very simple or simply or, or with a lot, not a lot of resources, Postgres should be better or is better, but not for production use case, I think. So again, this case here, these three steps here, let's make these red. I think these red steps here, this is very important to understand here how this works because it's not like the algorithm is querying data from Elasticsearch. So this needs, this needs ML, right? This needs some kind of machine learning. So like we get to this in a sec. I have two resources where we can look at this as well. Yeah. But this is, I think this is something how this works. Now I was thinking, okay, how can I deploy this? Uh, I was thinking, okay, we have a Dockerized environment, right? We want to do this Dockerized. How can we do this? And so I split this into interfaces on the left here, storage, processing, and visualization, right? And you see here, I put fast API for instance, here into interfaces and processing because like the interface is the actual API that gets called, but the back and processing of fast API is here. So this would be one container, right? So we would have one for fast API. We would have a container for the Postgres database, a container for Elasticsearch. So one, two, three, the processing that stores the data into or that indexes the data in Elasticsearch that I would run as Docker container. So that's four. Streamlit UI, this would be five, right? So this would be five containers. It's not super difficult to run. Let's say the processing for the Chen AI part, we use OpenAI through a token, would work, right? So that's why I create this out. This is basically not a container for us. If we want to have this locally, we would download a Llama version, Llama 3.1. Like they have the different models. And I think one of the models that we could use here is the 8B model because that is not big and they don't show this on this page here. But like the they have different qualities of models and I think the 8B model is something like three gigabytes or something. So it's not super big, right? So I was thinking, okay, we could deploy this here as, a, as another container. So we would have six here. And yeah. So this is how I imagined this to set this up. I find this very interesting. Um, I also saw today another post because people are already doing this. Alexi from LLM Zoom Camp did this on a local machine. Yeah, here it is. Here, this is what they built. It's like, I, I, I find this interesting. Uh, it's not like this visualization isn't really a perfect visualization um, because 
one problem I see with this, they built Streamlit here and Streamlit is the manager of everything. So you have an app that manages everything, which is, eh, I think, how I, like how I said, an API in between, this is more production ready, right? If you build it like this, that you have an API here and that API actually manages the processing from the UI, not the, the thing runs on Streamlit. And also what is a bit misleading here is that Streamlit, let's say here, takes data or pushes data to Elasticsearch and then this goes into Olama. This also doesn't really make sense because it's, as, a, as I've shown you here, it's, it should be Streamlit is, is getting data here from Elasticsearch and then pushing the data here, then the results get returned here. Right. So this visualization, although it looks nice with the with the moving parts here, it's not like exactly the thing. Also in this, there's no indexing done here or you can see one here. But this people are doing this and they're using Grafana here and Postgres for chat history and a monitoring dashboard. I'm guessing also for statistics. So they're doing this. I was thinking about this here and setting this up as containers. Now, of course, would you need to do this immediately? Mm. Or would this be cool to do this like they did in here as a, on AWS? And then, for instance, create a template, like a, a Terraform template or something where you can run this or set this up as infrastructure, as code. This, I think this would be cool and this would be very helpful for students. By the way, this here, this basically means that the Streamlit UI always goes through the interface, always goes through the API. Right? And we could do this without a local container, and we could do this with a local container. But again, the problems, the big problems I see right now are these here. Getting good, co uh, writing the right stuff or writing the content of this into Elasticsearch right so that um, questions are able to retrieve the right content and retrieving the right content for the question. I think these are the most important things in this. Now, they actually put this, there's a cookbook from OpenAI. There's also this here that is actually from Elastic Labs. This is an introduction, how this works. And they, they were saying here with the application, this is how this is going to look. And this is how this works, right? You have a proprietary documents here, they go with the pipeline into Elasticsearch. Then second, or you ask a question in the UI here, UX, ask a question, retrieve the documents. Number two, return relevant documents, build LLM context, and then ask the question to LLM with the context, right? And then human-like accurate answer comes back and seven, display the answer to the user. Right. So I think this is this shows it very nicely. And they show here how to do this. They also have code here. I find this very interesting. Uh, they have Python code, examples, function the query elastic using semantic search. Right. I think this is this is important to get the data out. Front and simple chat interface, getting the answer back to the client. So the code should not be super big here. Right, test the application, generate vector embeddings for each document at ingest time. So maybe it's not that difficult at all. I don't know. Like, yeah, but so there are resources where they help you actually set this up, actually build this. Super cool. The other resource that I was looking at was this one here with OpenAI. And this is basically the same one where they have specific OpenAI uh, packages here the OpenAI package. And with that package, you can then like read CSV, find pandas data set, create index with mappings, index data into Elasticsearch. You see, it's the same thing, batch size. And in this, they also have examples here. Question, encode a question with OpenAI embedding model, right? So there are semantic search queries. This is something that you need to understand like, okay, if you run your query, then you will get out th this amount of data. Like you will get out a lot of data. 
and this data you then send with your question to the Chen AI model and then it generates you the answer. Right? So, uh, yeah. I hope this was a bit helpful. I hope this uh, showed a bit how this actually works in the background. What they were not showing here, they were actually not leaving out a lot here. Um, how to set this up. I think this is something we should do in the future, in a future course. As I built this, maybe build this up locally, then do the same thing on AWS for you, and then add some with a, a CloudFormation or Terraform or whatever template so you can actually run this as a code or have the infrastructure set up as a code. I think that would be really cool. Yeah, guys. Um, that was so much for me. I hope this was helpful for you. Thanks for being here. For me, this was an interesting topic. I just want to share this with you. I hope you learned something. If you want to learn data engineering, check out learndataengineering.com. If you like this, hit the like button, send this to a friend of yours who might need it. And also check out the YouTube channel. We post a lot of stuff on the YouTube channel. Yeah. And then see you next time.